Hello. Well, a very good friend of mine has a birthday coming up, a rather significant birthday, and I wanted to make her a present. I wanted to make something special, something I've never made before. So I'm going to try and forge flour from this lump of steel. So this is a 30 mil square bar. It's actually a bit bigger than I wanted. 25 square would be ideal, or inch square. But I think I can make it work with this. So it's something I've never done before. But, um, I think I've got a fair shot at it. If you look around on YouTube, um, the usual way of forging flowers is to use a template and you forge them out of sheet metal. So if you do a Google image search for um, a rose petal template or forged flower template, something like that, you'll see loads and loads of um, things that you can print out, which have basically got like um, seven petal patterns kind of like that and then in descending order and the idea is you, you cut all those out of, out of steel out of sheet steel and then you stack them together and you forge them into something that looks like a flower and that's all well and good but two things there one I didn't really like working with sheet metal and the cutting out of those little petals is dead fiddly um, the way I've done it commercially is to send off the template to a laser cutter and then you just get back basically a flower making kit um, but the other thing I, that, that puts me off using that method is that is, you could, don't really get much texture because the metal that you're starting with is so thin that that's, what, that's all you can work with really so it's, you're working with a, almost a 2D material my idea and well my hope rather is that by starting with this I can get something which has got a lot more texture in it and just has a, hopefully, has a bit more flower about it in its finished form. But we'll see, because like I say, I've never done this before. So the idea, and I have had a look round on YouTube, and there's, I only found one video where someone's doing this. It's a very traditional method, and of course the person that's doing it is Joey van der Steeg, who is a Dutch blacksmith. Um, and he is, a, as far as I can tell, very traditional. Um, so yes, I will link to his video and if you want to see someone <laughs> doing it properly, I suggest going and watching that. Um, but if you want to see someone having a go, then by all means, carry on watching me. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a hot cup. Uh, the other thing to contend with is it's very hot outside. I'm already sweltering hot. I haven't even lit the forge yet. So yeah, I shall have to take some, uh, some <laughs> quite a few breaks of things and, and, and chuck down lots of water. Anyway, the hot cutting. My favorite thing to use is this old hatchet because it's just the right shape. So I'm gonna get this hot, obviously, and then hammer in like that until it starts to spread out. I'll go in in the middle of each side and cut almost to the center. Once I've done that, you can imagine it will spread out and it'll look like a Maltese cross. Then I'll cut off um, probably about 20 mil of that, three quarters of an inch off the end of that bar and then flip it this way up and then spread it out and hopefully we'll achieve a flower shape. That's my hope. Right, let's slide the forge and make it even more hot in here.
starting the forum. Separate off um, some from the end. So I'm aiming for not quite a cube. Three quarters of an inch, 20 mil from the end.
its edge a little bit, just on this top part. Done something else on the hottest day of the year. Oh well. So that's well on its way, those two. Um, one of them is working really well. So this one has done exactly what I want, so that's great. The other one I think I cut a little bit too long, so there's a bit more mass in the metal than I want, and it's not really. <laughs> it, it might come good. Um, yeah, I might have slightly overdone it. Warm in there for a minute. Right, I've had three cups of coffee <laughs> and a good long rest, sat in a breeze. So I've cooled down, I've rehydrated, and uh, I'm going to get back on with it. There's still plenty of heat in the forge, so it won't take long to come up to temperature. Let's have a quick look at these before I light the forge and make lots of noise. So that one, the thinner of the two, that's forming out quite well. There's still plenty of heat in there. <laughs> and my gloves are getting a bit hot. That one, like I say, I think there might be a bit too much material. But I'm going to carry on and spread them out. Obviously I want that down to a couple of millimetres, so I've got some <laughs> considerable way to go yet. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll spread them out and see what they look like.
you can hopefully see I'm not just hitting it randomly as I go I'm mostly working in the middle in the mass of the object but then I'm putting some round the edges to take it from that sharp angle there to a bit more rounded but not not quite losing the tip either so there is a plan I've just ground a hole again because it's uh, rather hot. But they've both come to be pretty much the same shape now, which is brilliant. So they're both going to be usable by the looks of it. Um, and you can see how much thinner that is than when I started. But you can see why I was doing it now, that the shape is really coming together. Um, yes, and it's so by doing what appears to be a really long winded process, I'm actually getting some rather nice petal shapes starting to form, and they have a sort of a slight randomness to them, which just comes about organically, I guess. I'm quite happy with the shape so far, but that'll do for a minute. I'm just gonna have a quick break, stand outside. Oh, probably drink a gallon or two of water. Ugh, a couple of pints of water. <laughs> I'm ready to get back to it. Uh, Right, I've textured them both. Let me show you. Here they are. So you should be able to see there, there's lots of um, striations on them. And that's what I did with the cross peen hammer. As I was doing that, I was thinning down the very edges as well and um, just giving it a nice ripple as, as an actual petal would have. So yeah, quite happy with those so far. And um, and obviously I've punched a hole 
right through the middle there. The next thing I want to do is make the stem. I've got here some 10 mil round bar and what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to try and do, is to simultaneously thin down the very end bit and then fatten up what's just below it. So if that's the that's that round bar and what I want to end up with is to fatten it a bit like that and then this bit comes into a tenon. And then this tenon then becomes like a rivet. I'll round it over here and that will clamp the flower in place. So I was thinking of having um, like a stem with two flowers coming off of it. So you know, one main stem like that and then one coming off like that. Something like that. You know, but I might just run out of time. <laughs> it's more important to get something done. Anyway, I'm going to try it with two single stems and then we'll see what happens. quite well. <laughs> I've never riveted a flower onto, onto a bit of round bar before. But yes, that's what I was intending so I'm happy with that. So you can see there I did the whole of the upsetting of the what's effectively a rivet with the um, small ball pin hammer. So this one. And then there's enough of a shoulder underneath there to catch all that and it worked quite well. So the rest of the stem I'll have to thin down and make it look a bit more like a stem. Um, but first I'm going to finish off these petals. So I'm going to heat it up again and then bring them up, give them a bit of, you know, give them their final shape. Um, then it's just a case of thinning down this stem a bit, putting a bit of shape into that and uh, yeah, it's on its way. But yeah, so I've definitely picked the wrong day. It's absolutely sweltering. Well, I'm going to have another quick break. <laughs> have another gallon of water. And we're back to it. Oh.
right. So close, but that's it for tonight. I'm absolutely shattered. Oh, it's gone eight o'clock. I'm rather hungry. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm confident now I can finish that early in the morning and um, be on my way. Uh, if I can find my glove, I'd show you. Actually, quite pleased with it so far. <laughs> quite a lot of work, but then it—it's always a lot of work doing something for the first time. You're effectively prototyping, <clears throat> and I'm aware all the time I've been doing this, you know, hammering away. That was a substantial lump of metal to start with. Um, I've got a power hammer here, <laughs> so, but. I don't use the power hammer for prototyping, it's just, yeah. The, the thing is with the power hammer, you generally need to make tooling for it to use it for something, and yeah, it, it will speed things up enormously if I went into flower making, which I don't intend to. But yes, usually for prototypes, it's all handmade. Whew, what a day. And that was the hottest day of the year so far. Oh, not sure quite how hot it got. Well, in here it got really hot. <laughs> Whew. Right, I'm gonna have a cold shower, I think. I'll see you later. Well, I'll see you in the morning. So here we are, day two then of, <laughs> of making a pair of flowers. It seems mad. Um, well, that's just how long it takes when you're doing something for the first time, I guess. But I could have finished it last night. I was just about, I don't know, half an hour away maybe, but I was just too dacking to carry on. I just don't have the stamina I used to have, and that's just a fact of life. I also had to make a creative decision on how to join the flowers together if I'm going to do that. So I think I'd like to. Um, I want them to end up something like that. But first I've got to taper them right down. So this is about the the width that I'm after. And I'm gonna make that all the way down on both of them. So I want that kind of swell at the top there. And then taper it down, I reckon that's about eight mil. Yeah, so I'll do that on both of them. And then I'll figure out how to join them up. <laughs> the twist it doesn't work with that type of flower so the, the entwining of them just yeah 
yeah, it just looks wrong. So what I'm going to do is take that twist out, um, straighten them both out a bit, and then I'll weld them together. I think that's the way to go. So I'm going to cut this one here. I'm going to clean it up, clean up this one, and then I'll MIG weld this one to this, and then tidy it up and give it a bit more shape in the stems. That's a pity because I was hoping to do the whole thing, to forge the whole thing, um, but yeah, <laughs> struggling for time and inspiration. I think that this is the best I can do. And uh, yes, I'm not going to forge weld it because I'm not very good at forge welding, and you're not going to forge weld in a single burner gas forge, oh, not that one anyway. And I'm not firing up the coal forge just to attempt that. So yes, this will have to do. now is to forge that out <laughs> and make it look a bit more like, like no, a bit better. Honestly. Got the um, finishing touch. So I'll let that wax um, cool down and it will go more of a sheen than it is now. And where it's all silver it will start to darken up a bit. Once it's 
cold and then the wax has hardened off once it's gone a bit tacky kind of like it has on the cold section down here I'll put another coat on and that'll be that so I really like um, making presents for people because it doesn't matter how long it takes because uh, it's a present so yeah if this was something I'd agreed to do for, for money I'd be stressing about the incredible amount of time that it took and all that kind of thing but whenever you're doing something new it takes a long time I think one of the things that marks out a good blacksmith from a, a poor blacksmith is, is efficiency so I'm not a good blacksmith but I know what I'm after so eventually I tend to get there if I was a good blacksmith I'd get there much quicker and much more efficiently and um, be able to make some money out of it. <laughs> so this sort of project is something I like to do to show you how, not how to do it really, because it can't really be a tutorial if you're watching someone do it for the first time, but just how to not be put off by something that you don't know how to do, um, because we have a fairly basic skill set and an idea of what you're aiming at, given some time and effort, you can get there. I really enjoyed making those. And it's quite mad, isn't it? Started with this, so sort of hefty lump of square bar. And then cut it into these funny little Maltese cross shapes. And finally forge them into flower heads. It seems an unlikely starting point, I think. I'm not saying there's any better or any worse than doing it from the, um, the cut-out patterns but it does give you a really nice totally variable texture to it because of the, the, the way they're thinned out yeah so all the crenellations at the end of the petals and everything and then it thickens in the middle I don't know it just has a, a bit of depth to it which I, I really like so yeah I'm calling that a win well, hopefully the person I made them for likes them too, because I'll find out in a couple of hours. <laughs> right, when the wax is dried I'll pop them out in the sun and take some photos and I'll take those on the end of the video. Other than that, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Cheers.